name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And today we are doing some super cool DIYs that are inspired by geodes. Geodes? What's a geode, Becky? <laughs> um, a geode actually is a rock that has a cavity in it that often crystals will grow in and form. People cut up these rocks and often slice them. You mean like this? Exactly like As that. your coaster? Um, yeah, my dad actually had one in his office, I remember, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And now that I know how much they're worth, I was like, I should have taken that, maybe, because it was like this big. Oh, really? And eh? it was like a chunk of rock. It looked like rock on the inside, crystal on the inside. They are gorgeous and like uber trendy right now, and especially things inspired by geodes as well. So we're gonna do three DIY home decor pieces that are inspired by geodes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is this gorgeous wall art paper geo that almost has a 3D effect. It does. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Start with a stack of paper in the color scheme you would like to use. I'm going for a nice pink, gray, and white combo in a thick cardstock. At this point, cut down all of your cardstock so it fits into your frame perfectly if it doesn't already. Sketch out your rough geode shape outline with a pencil onto the top layer and cut it out using an X-Acto knife. With your next layer underneath, cut out a slightly smaller shape than your top layer. Continue this process for the rest of your geode shapes getting smaller and smaller. It's also fun to slightly alter the shapes as you go, so you could leave like a large bump on one side and kind of make them a little bit more of a different like rounded shape, not perfectly the same shape every time, but also do kind of stick to the general flow. You know, you know. I know. I did this when I was making this, looking up pictures of real geodes on images, mm -hmm. and then tracing the same sort of shapes rings. to get it, yeah, rings, looking as real as possible. Once you have all of your shapes cut, you can go back in with some gold paint to add detail around the edges of some of the shapes. I outlined a few layers, then filled in the middle part with gold. Once I had all of my layers complete, I thought that the top layer, which was plain white, looked a little bit boring and like it needed something, so we improvised. With some watercolor, I added some pink tones to the top layer. When you're happy with the look of your layers, the next step is to space out your cardstock to give your geode art a 3D effect. Using some craft foam, cut them into squares and add three or four pieces to each layer, alternating the areas you're placing them for even coverage. The very last step is to frame your art. So for this, you're gonna need a thick picture frame or a sort of shallow shadow box, depending on how thick your art ends up being. Put your geode art into the frame and you're done. This DIY is so easy to do and very affordable since it's essentially all paper. And the best part of DIYs like this is that you can adapt them to whatever room color scheme you already have going on if it feels like it needs an extra art piece. True. Okay, I have two things. Mm -hmm. The inside pieces, yes. you can also use as like the reverse. Yes, you're right. I actually did film a shot of that because it looked really cool. Yeah, also imagine this on like a giant scale. Oh my goodness. Like out of like MDF or something? Something. Right? Next style selected accent wall coming your way. Seriously though. That's cool. All right, what's up next? For this next geode inspired art piece, we're going to do an acrylic pour. And guess what? We've never done one of these before. I can't believe it since these are like uber popular right now, but we've never tried it. And just to note that this one actually isn't resin based because I felt like that was a little bit advanced for this tutorial. And yeah, resin can be expensive just to pour on paper. So I do want to experiment with resin in the future, but for today, we're keeping it simple. I think we should do a whole resin video. Yes, there's so many cool things. Like, comment if you want to see that. We've also never used resin. What are we doing over here? Are we even DIYers? Unsubscribe. Just kidding, subscribe please. For this DIY, you'll need a canvas in the size of your choice, an assortment of acrylic paints in your color palettes, and a variety of cups, which we found in our recycling. We went dumpster diving for this DIY. And you'll also need a pouring medium. I'm gonna be using the brand Liquitex, and we will link it below. Following the instructions on your bottle, add your pouring medium into your different paints. Mine is a one-to-one -one ratio, and I'm using a mixture of blues, grays, black, gold, and white. And I made two whites, one for the base of my canvas, and a second white to make a speckled mixture. The speckled mixture is gonna have like blacks, grays, blues, whatever you want in there, but just like dot them in, drop them in, splatter them in. Don't do too much and don't mix this together because when you pour it out, it's actually gonna give a cool marble effect, but you don't need to mix this together. For your setup, you'll need something to protect your surface and either cups or cans to prop up your canvas. So start by covering your canvas with a thick layer of the white. This is gonna help everything spread a little bit easier later. Then we get on to the pouring. I'm gonna start with a generous amount of paint, followed by a different color right in the middle, and then another. When you're pouring the speckle, just pour it as the same way you would any of the other colors. 
As a general rule, I make the first pours a little bit larger than the inside pours. Once you've created 10 or so rings, it's time to start tilting. Essentially, we're going to make this circle of rings look like a quarter of the geode slice by kind of tilting and spreading it all out. Like this. Like one quarter of that. Like this. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Go slowly so that the inside rings don't overtake your outside rings. And then repeat this, but then focus on the corners. So moving your middle of your geode so that it lands on one of the corners. You're gonna have some paint running off here, so just beware. This is why we protected our surface, because it's gonna get a little bit messy. But when it reaches the corner and you're done with it, you can set it on your cans or cups or whatever to dry, and then just come by. And I just kind of like wiped off the edges periodically so I didn't have these like giant drips hardening. If you just come by every so often, you'll get them and eventually they'll stop forming. And then also, this will have a lot of excess paint. So I was kind of just like scooping all of it up into like a container, <laughs> and it just made like a gray or whatever your color is. It might create a different color. But then you could keep that for paint use or other pours or whatever you want to do. You don't have to throw it all that paint. Mm -hmm. And then we just left this overnight and it dried completely. Ooh, this looks so cool. It doesn't look like anybody painted it because you didn't paint it, you like poured it. Mm -hmm. And whatever that is in that mixing medium, it made the paint like glossy. Yeah. So it does look semi like resin esque, anyways. That's just an added bonus. That's true. We got like, I think, a semi gloss one, but mm -hmm. I think you can get pouring medium that isn't semi gloss. So if you want that gloss effect, make sure you notice when you're buying your pouring medium. Yeah. Well, even our semi was pretty glossy. True that. So next up, we are gonna do a yarn geode. I'm excited for this one, especially because when we did our DIY rug a while ago, you guys, oh, yeah. like everybody said, Carl, Scott, why are you not using a latch hooking tool for this? I knew of it, but I've never used it before, so I didn't think about it for that video, but since everyone recommended it to us, we got ourselves one and we're using it today. Wait, can I just say, in our defense, <laughs> I bought a latch hooking tool, that's why we have it for this DIY, for that last DIY, oh, but really? it wasn't big enough. Like maybe. I needed like a giant latch hooking tool because we were using really chunky yarn when mm -hmm. we did that carpet DIY. So it didn't work. But it works for this one. So we're gonna show you. So to start, you'll need some of this rug canvas used for latch hooking. It can be found at the craft store and we'll also link some below. Sketch out the outline of your geode shape onto your base and add in some rings for the geode as well. For the yarn, I'm gonna be using these colors. To save yourself some time, pre-cut a bunch of two inch pieces of all your colors. So now on to how you actually latch hook. <laughs> I made Claire laugh. She looks like a lobster. A latch hook. No, don't. <laughs> it's such a trip. You can't like move your top fingers, only your thumb. <laughs> it looks better from this direction. This is the new dab. Do the latch hook. Seriously, we're starting a thing right now. All right, let me teach the people. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So with your latch hook open, go under a line in your grid so the handle is on the top side of the grid. Take a piece of yarn and wrap it under the handle and slide it up until it's right under the latch. Loop it over into the inside of the latch. Pull your hook closed and out of the grid. This will create your latch hook knot. Also as an FYI, there are tons of super, super in-depth tutorials on YouTube on how to latch hook. If this explanation wasn't enough for you, we can link one. So I started by filling in my inner section and filled it with this white flecked yarn. Next, I made a ring around the inner loop with some plain white. Continue filling in all your rings with different colored yarn to complete the geode. Next, you can give your rings a haircut. You can also experiment with trimming the different rings to different lengths to make it look even more like mm. different rings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the inside one less. Mm-hmm. And then the outside one more. But then the one after it a little less. So it's like... But overall, like, you know how they're usually like... Yeah. Caves? Yeah. <gasps> Yeah. Smart. Throw back to the first DIY here. <laughs> Who's a kitten? Oh, oh yeah, cute. Kmart. <laughs> Kmart. Now you can cut off any of the extra grid around the slices. I was also thinking it could be really wicked to take some geode like crystal charms mm -hmm. and put them on the center as well. That'd be so cool. There's so many things I want to do, but I can't do it all. Yeah. <sighs> That's why I love when you guys send us your DIYs on Instagram, actually, because you do amazing things that I never would even thought of. So, tag us. Living vicariously through you. <laughs> For real. I also want to say that latch hooking is really, really easy once you get the hang of it, but it does take some time, much like that rug video, which I will link as well, because I want you guys to watch it, because it was fun, it took a while, and I, I love how it turned out. Yeah, it's one of those, I'm gonna watch TV for a couple hours or listen to a podcast, 
the Sorry Girls podcast. Oh, good segue. Thank you. It's called A Little About A Lot, and we will link it below for you. New episodes every Monday, and we'd love it if you checked it out. It's actually really fun. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, make sure you give it a big old like. And if you loved it, make sure you sub it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi guys, welcome to the end slate. Isn't it so pretty? Becky redid it, I love it. Also check out this plant stamp table that was recreated from our dollar store DIYs from forever ago. I love it and they did a great job. Send your DIYs on Instagram using hashtag Squat.